and this video is going to be about setting up a breadboard for use on digital ICs uh, so that we can hook up logic circuits and gates and different things like that. So um, we start out with the breadboard. We already have ours finished, but if you start out from uh, scratch, we'll try and go through each thing. Up here is the 5 volt, which is the red jack and the black jack to the board coming in on this one. Uh, is the ground and we definitely want to follow those colors. Those are common conventions in the digital world The next thing you have to do is run a solid wire from underneath this jack and bring it to the bus in this case we have a red bus along the top and We also want to do the same thing with the ground jack and bring that to the black bus one thing to be careful of, uh, make sure that you get this wire underneath here, but you don't get any uh, insulation underneath there. You want to strip that wire just the right distance, so not much or any uh, bare wire is hanging out. But you also don't want the insulation to go underneath here, or you won't get a good connection. You should tighten this up, and you should bring this to this board. The next thing that you want to do is you want to distribute these plus 5 volt bus, uh, which is also called VCC in the digital TTL digital world. So you want to distribute this plus 5 volt bus and this ground bus. Um, these painted wires are blue. We always wish they would be black. But you want to distribute them to all the vertical buses that are labeled with like colors on the boards. This board you see one, two, three, four sets of vertical buses. And you do that at the most convenient point. And if you look at the top of the board, we're running a wire from the red bus into this red bus, another wire from the red bus coming in from the power to this vertical red bus, and so on and so on. We're running the black wire uh, the same way, from the ground bus to this vertical bus, and we repeat that four times. And now we've got power, uh, ground and power, uh, to our whole board so that we're ready to go. <coughs> you might see some jumpers sitting on my board. Um, they're in a bus. You might wonder what they are because it, it does look like they're not really doing anything. And they're just, it's just a storage location. So I want these jumpers to be ready because I know when I put a digital IC in here, I'm going to have to hook up 5 volts and ground. And these are just the right size to hook up those ground and 5 volt connections. And a lot of times, if I haven't used a board before, you'll see these sitting uh, right in these vertical buses so they're not shorting anything out. Also, another good point when we talk about shorting anything out, any connection you make that goes between the red and the, the blue buses or the black uh, ground bus, uh, that would be a short and that would be a bad thing uh, So all over the board you have to make sure that you don't have that problem uh, These are the connections to the power supply. I would use a, a Plus 5 volt fixed power supply when I'm working with TTL ICs I would suggest that you do the same uh, Because if we adjust the voltage too high and we have all these ICs hooked up It would damage all of them at the same time. So a plus 5 volt uh, operating power supply is not going to harm anything and we won't be able to turn that voltage up too high and do anything. The other thing I do with my boards you might notice down here at this bottom section uh, in the uh, 5 volt bus and also in the ground bus I pushed uh, these pin headers. Uh, students came up with this idea a long time ago uh, these are special pin headers. If you look, they have long pins on both sides. They're not meant to be soldered onto a board. They're a little hard to find, but uh, suppliers can get them. So I always cut them to the size that I want, and I use them uh, as connection points. So that's what you see right down here is a connection point for 5 volts and a connection point over here for ground. And the first thing I do is hook up my meter. So this, this digital meter here is set for to measure DC voltage. Uh, I don't have my power supply on. That's why you see the voltage there right now. 
and I run my black and my red leads and in this case I use mini grabbers on there and I always have my power supply hooked up to my board when I'm working with it. If I turn that on um, you'll notice it went to 5 volts right away and this is always monitoring that. That's sort of a double check for me. So I'm going to turn that off because I don't want to short anything out with my pointer as I move along here. So we have all the ground and power all wired up and ready to go. We discussed these little jumpers that make things faster. You'll also see I'm sort of in love with these uh, jumper wires. They're very fast to work with. And you'll usually see me uh, have a bunch of spares sitting over here with all different colors. Uh, 5 volt would be the red, black would be the ground, and then I can follow whatever other convention uh, with wires that I have. Maybe yellow would be my input wires and blue would always be output. And that lets me hook up circuits as I, as I move along. And um, once you get all that stuff done, you have your power supply ready to go. I have some extra things like I have my analog discovery 2 test equipment in here and I actually have these set up to ICs. Uh, the only thing really ever, the only other thing to know and be careful of uh, by convention is these are TTL ICs. We make sure that we have the right part numbers and when we push them in we always want the uh, pin 1 up to the top left hand side and we know what is pin 1 by which is the biggest divot on the actual IC. You can see here's a divot, here's a divot, and then here's a divot and that's indicating that this is pin 1 on the IC. You'll notice they're all in the same orientation as we go along. When you push these ICs on the board they're pretty easy. You line up the pins. Sometimes the pins gall out a little bit when they're brand new and you might have to put them on the edge of a table and straighten the pins out, um, push them in towards the center just a little bit. And then you should just be able to nicely sit them in here straddling this channel and push them down till they're snug. When you push them down, you want to sort of be viewing all the pins to make sure that none of them bend uh, when you're working with that. And one last thing, uh, just for your own health, uh, when we remove these ICs, there is an IC remover tool, but we use a flat bladed, small flat bladed screwdriver. We put it in here and we tilt it just a little bit. We do that on one end and we do that on the other end and it comes right out. And then I can turn around and uh, put this back in the board as I orient the pins. Sorry if my fingers are in the way. Um, and then push it down snugly. So that's how you get these ICs in and out of the board. Um, you might think that you'd be able to take your finger and just put your one finger on one side and one finger on the other side and wiggle. Uh, that always ends up with it quickly turning around and jamming the leads into your finger. Uh, it hurts. And uh, you have all these little uh, blood marks uh, for where the pins go in. They're not, they're not super sharp, but that makes it worse. Uh, so don't try and pull them out with your finger. I know that you think that you can do it, but we've all turned around and done it and turned around and jammed them right into our fingers or we bent the leads on the ICs themselves. And I think that gives you a good introduction to setting up your breadboard to use digital ICs and work with them. Analog ICs, there might be some different challenges. Um, some of the shortcuts you can use, but our focus of our video is uh, digital ICs so that you can work the labs in EET-128 and EET-178. I hope that was helpful, and we'll talk to you later.